All right. So <clears throat> I'll go to the first slide and we'll see what our whole syllabus is. So guys, I am starting with uh, propulsion. All right. Roughly speaking, this is ranging between 20 to 25 marks in your gate exam. All right. So what in propulsion we need to uh, go in detail, all these things I will discuss now, and then we will slowly, gradually take this step towards jet propulsion. All right. So when we talk about uh, aircraft engines, broadly speaking, we have two kinds of aircraft engines. Mostly you people know all this stuff, but I will try to cover everything from scratch. So you have two kinds of engines specifically. One are air breathing engines and the other one are non-air breathing. All right. So when we say non-air breathing engines, all of us know these are typically the rocket engines, all right, which we use to uh, do our orbital mechanics. We want to go to moon. We want to go to low Earth orbit, high Earth orbit, geosynchronous orbit. You want to go to Mars. All these things you will take care with the help of non-air breathing engines, which is rocket. And the reason I have circled this is because this is part of your gates labor. So we will go in great detail related to rockets. All right. This is first portion. And when we talk about air breathing engines, these are the engines which will fly in close proximity of our atmosphere. So all the aircraft which we see on a regular basis, all are air breathing engines. So air breathing means air enters inside these engines and after that they operate. Whereas in rocket engines, because you will be traveling mostly in vacuum, you will be traveling in space. There is no air present. So you need to carry your own air that we will see later once we enter into uh, rockets. Now in air breathing engines, you have two families. All right. One is the gas turbine engine family. And the other one is piston engine family. Now why I have circled this gas turbine engine family is the reason being this is only part of our gate slavers. We don't have piston engines and reciprocating engines in our uh, gate aerospace uh, slavers. So typically piston engines are also known as reciprocating engines. And these are very slow moving aircrafts. All right. You will see, I'll give you a brief introduction later, but primarily we will be focusing completely on gas turbine engines. And below I have given you just the simple names so that you people know what do you mean by gas turbine engines. So you have turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, turboshaft, ramjet, scramjet. So all these engines we will be discussing in detail, in great detail. And all these engines are continuously asked in your gate exam. Not only the numerical, they ask theory also. So at least you should know what kind of slavers we are dealing with. Then I will go in detail uh, about what all we need to study. You cannot say turbojet is your slavers. Turbojet is a big thing, right? So what all we need to study, we will go in detail step by step. So I hope you have some idea about what kind of engines we are dealing with. Now, if I go to the next slide, <clears throat> you may have seen this image a lot, but I have taken this image just to explain you one very important concept. And with this, I will be defining my whole slavers. So if you see, I have taken a cross section of a engine. Typically, I use turbojet engine as an example, but I will not use the word turbojet here. And then we will see why all these components are present. So if you see your engine, this engine will be covered as well. All right. So you will have the engine cowling. And inside this engine, if you see the first component, which they have clearly mentioned is an intake. And I really don't expect you people to know what an intake is, what intake do, why you have installed this at the first component, what are different kinds of intake. We will discuss everything slowly, step by step. Any time you feel that you need more clarification on my point, please let me know. I will discuss that. So first component, what you see is an inlet or an intake and the air enters into it. <clears throat> then after that, you see the next component which you see this big thing, right? And they have given you multiple lines here. And they have mentioned this as compression. All right. So first you have an intake. Then you have a compression, which typically we name it as compressor. All right. 
Then after this, if you see this portion, this portion, let me show it in different color. If you see this portion, they have given this as combustion, which is basically our combustion chamber. So our third component is combustion chamber. Then if you see next, which is these components. And if you see, there are three lines here they have shown. They have mentioned this as turbine. And the last component which they have shown in a particular shape is referred to as exhaust, which is typically also known as a nozzle. All right. So this is, you will see, I have multiple slides to explain the function of each one of them and then construct an engine. You will understand the whole process in 10, 15 minutes only you will understand the process. So these are the components typically every engine will have. Now you can form different engines with the help of different combinations. And these engines we will name as turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, turboshaft, ramjet, scramjet with slight modifications. Now why I am focusing on this is if I go to next slide, this is an actual engine uh, schematic diagram. If I'll go, if you see on a test rig, this is kind of an actual turbojet engine, which is being kept here. And you can see the size of this engine. This is huge, right? So if you see these things, which you see, right, these blades, and there are so many blades, you cannot even see these blades are typically this portion. And this is basically our axial flow compressor. I will come to that. What is axial flow compressor? Then after that, in this portion, you will install your combustion chamber. Then after that, if you see these kind of blades, these are nothing but our turbine blades. And before this, you will have your diffuser. And after this, you will have your nozzle. All right. So this is very typical. Uh, <clears throat> real life, real world engine. Whereas if you see in this diagram, you have multiple uh, schematic diagrams. Now, why I started my lecture with this diagram, you will come to know in the next slide. So this is very simple block view. You will see in most of the textbooks, they will draw uh, diagrams like this to show turbojet, turbofan engines. I just want you people to understand one thing here. So if you want to design any engine, what you need to do? You need to know everything about this component, which is known as diffuser. Now this diffuser is also known as an intake. And this is also known as an inlet. So first thing, if I need to learn anything about any aircraft engine, I should have knowledge about diffuser which is also known as inlet, which is also known as intake, right? First thing. Second, if I go inside the engine and you will understand this guys, why it is in the same sequence. The next component you need to study is what is known as compressor. And this compressor basically can be of two types. One is an axial flow compressor. Typically people say this as AFC. And the other kind of is centrifugal flow compressor. So you can have two kind of compressor, flow compressor, and people say this as CFC. <clears throat> now you will see which engine will use which one. We will see later turbojet engine will use axial flow compressor, whereas turboprop engines will use centrifugal flow compressor, your helicopters will use centrifugal flow compressors and so on. But there are only two kinds of compressors, that's it. Then we need to understand everything about combustion chamber, correct? So we will study everything about combustion chamber. Then we should study about definitely turbines. So the next topic is turbines and in aircraft, you will use always, which are known as axial flow turbines, which is also referred to as AFT. 
Now these turbines, there are different turbines, guys. There are impulse turbine, there are uh, radial turbines, but in aircraft, we never use those turbines. So there is only one possibility to design a gas turbine engine, and that is with axial flow turbine. But there are two possibilities for compressor. All right. And then in the end, you have the last component, which is basically the nozzle. Now, again, nozzle can be a CD nozzle. It can be a converging nozzle. Similarly, diffuser can be a CD diffuser. Those things we will try to complicate slowly in detail later. All right, when we go inside each component. So if you sum all these and after that, if you simply write rocket, rocket propulsion, because all these components which you see here are for an air breathing engines. Air breathing engine means the engine which we typically see in our regular flights. And apart from this, we need to study non-air breathing engines, which comes under rocket propulsion. In next slide, you can actually see the image. I will ex explain this image in a bit. But as of now, this is what your gate syllabus is for propulsion. And this will take care of 20 to 25 marks. So if I know each and every statement here, believe me, guys, you can construct any engine. If you know diffuser, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, and nozzle, you can design turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, ramjet, scramjet, turboshaft, any engine can be derived or can be made with the help of these components individually. You know a big machine is a combination of small, small components, right? So in your gate syllabus or even in your academics, the whole intention of these topics is that you understand equations, understand the working principle of each component, and then you can design the whole aircraft. This is the reason I took the image. Now, keep this in mind. Typically in, a, in books, they will simply say an engine like this, but a real engine is something like this. And this is kind of a better colored uh, diagram of the same representation. Now, if you know the syllabus, so you have all this and rocket propulsion is altogether a separate topic, which we will cover uh, after jet propulsion. And if you see, I have shown typically first stage, second stage, third stage, and then the payload section. All right, I have shown you a three stage rocket. You will be solving three stage rockets in your gate uh, numericals. They have asked this, and we will talk everything about that strap on boosters. What is fuel? What is oxidizer? What you are carrying here? What is payload? Everything we will go in detail, but I hope you understand this is altogether a separate topic. It doesn't come under uh, gas turbine engines. So what we will do is first we'll understand our gas turbine engines. And then once this is done, you know everything about the whole engine. Then we will move slowly towards rocket engines. All right. So once you know or once you have a rough idea about what we are studying, what is your whole syllabus, you will see syllabus PDFs in very, very different forms. But this is kind of a whole summary of your uh, gate syllabus. All right. I'll go to next slide. Now, <clears throat> I have kept this slide just to make yourself comfortable why your gate, gate syllabus is important. So if you see the first image I have kept here is a turbojet engine. I just want you people to understand one thing. You have a compressor in turbojet engine. After that, you in this turbofan engine, you have a compressor. In turboprop engine, you have a compressor. Immediately after compressor, you have combustion chamber in turbojet engine. Here also you have a combustor. After that, here also you have a combustor. They have written it as burner. And I, I'll come to ramjet engine separately. Then next is turbine. Here also you have a turbine. Here also you have a turbine. Here also you have a turbine, two turbines. We will see this. And then last is exhaust, which is nozzle. Here also you have a nozzle. Here also you have a nozzle. Now what I'm trying to convey is, if you study individually about compressor, combustion chamber, turbine and nozzles, you are good to design a turbojet engine, turbofan engine, turboprop engine and a ramjet engine. 
Now, why or how these engines are actually different? So if you see the first component, right? Here, our first component, guys, is intake. You will see what do you mean by intake because my whole today lecture will focus on turbojet engines. If you see in turbofan, you have a big fan here. And there is no diffuser in this. So in turbojet engine, there was no fan. In turbofan engine, there is a fan. But if you see, this is inside the body. This fan is not coming out. Then, if you see a turboprop engine, everything else is same. The only thing is, at front, we have installed big propeller blades. You have seen big propeller blades, big uh, propellers rotating in aircraft, right? So, in place of fan, if you install propeller blades, you will get a turboprop engine. If you remove the fan and the propeller blades, you will get the turbojet engine. And now if you come to the last ramjet engine, right? The first component is inlet, this portion. Then second is directly or combustion chamber. And then last is nozzle. Now what I'm saying is they have removed compressor. They have removed turbine. And the engine what you got is a ramjet engine. So rather than learning each engine individually, which we will do later, what we will focus is we'll try to understand each and every component. Because if you study compressor here, the same compressor is applicable here, same compressor is here, and you don't have a compressor in ramjet. If I study combustion chamber here, it is same copy-pasted equations in every engine. So automatically we are done with all the engines together if we have understood about each and every component step by step. Now, before going into the actual equations, I'll slowly move towards our jets propulsion syllabus now and the particular topic. Is this part clear to all of you? And guys, before opening up for doubts, keep this in mind, all these diffuser, combustion chamber and nozzle, right? They will prepare a chapter saying jet propulsion. You will understand this is what our first topic of gate is, which we will start in next uh, minute. So jet propulsion will cover all these diffusers, combustion chamber, nozzles. Exhale flow compressor is a separate unit. Turbine is a separate unit. Rocket propulsion is a separate unit. And then we will slowly uh, move towards the engines. Now, before going further, is anything you want me to repeat or should I start with jet propulsion, guys? Come on, guys, please respond. If it is clear, just let me know quickly so that we can move ahead. <clears throat> Perfect. All clear, right? Good, good, good. Fine. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> I'll go to the actual topic. So we are starting our unit one. And I told you complete propulsion is okay. Karan asked me one question, sir, fan and propeller both are same thing. So I'll, I'll give you an example, Karan. If you see an engine, all right, you must have seen an engine once you like, you have went to an airport, right? You must have seen an engine, which is having fan blades like this. And you cannot see definitely inside the engine, but you can, you must have definitely seen an engine like this also. So these are fan blades, why they are small, what is their function, we will learn slowly. And these are our propeller blades, what is their function, what they do, why they are bigger, this is also, and this is basically known as a turbo prop engine. And when fan is small and inside the cowling is known as a turbo fan engine. Is it clear, Karan? <clears throat> so once you go to an airport, right, you can observe this. Typically, you will see 95% of the aircraft to be turbofan only. All your aircraft when you're moving from, let's say, Bangalore to Delhi or Bangalore to any other place, you typically see uh, turbofan engines. You will hardly going to see uh, turbojet engines, which is typically used in fighter aircrafts. 
and you will see some of the turboprop engines, but uh, they will travel at very low speeds. We will see when we define uh, each and every engine. All right, now guys, I'll move forward. So out of your complete uh, slabus, right? Propulsion slabus, this jet propulsion will cover around eight, I can say eight to 10 marks. And everyone knows the importance of eight to 10 marks, guys. All right. So this is a huge topic. It's a very lengthy topic, but it's kind of a backbone of an aerospace engineer. If you are uh, willing to work in uh, propulsion domain, if you're a structure person, then altogether a different story. If you're into aerodynamics, altogether a different story. But if you are in jet, if you are a propulsion guy, then jet propulsion is a backbone uh, of every thing you will do in your job or in your uh, further studies. Now, I will not go through each of the topic now because it doesn't make sense. But if you broadly just see, right, you will see thrust equations, efficiency. I What I want you people to see is in jet propulsion itself, you see you are covering diffuser which is first component, first part. You're covering convergent nozzles, which is the last part. And if you see, you are covering combustion chamber, which is the center portion. So all these three components will be covered in this unit. Compressor will be separate, turbine will be separate, and anyhow rocket will be separate. Once you know all these components, then you will see what is a turbojet engine, what is a turbofan engine, what is a ramjet engine, what is a turboprop engine. These four engines are asked in your exam. 90% 90, 90 of your gate numerical will focus on turbojet and turbofan. The remaining 8 to 9% will go in ramjet and 1% of the question will go in turboprop. So there are hardly two questions asked in your gate exam from 2007 till 2024 on turboprop. Mostly all the numericals comes from turbojet and turbofan. Ramjet also is somewhere around some, maybe I can say seven or eight questions. So <clears throat> once I'll go through this topic, right, I will come back to this slide and mark what all topics we have covered. And once this is done, then we will go to next topic. I believe the best book for any aircraft uh, propulsion, this is kind of a Bible, guys, by Ahmed Sayed. Believe me, it's the best book, not only for cracking the gate exam. Once you start doing work in industry, right? If you're working in, let's say, GE, you're working in Rolls-Royce, anywhere you're working, right, on engines, you have to refer this book. And it is very nicely written, very simple, straightforward English. No hi-fi words, no big equations. You can easily understand everything related to engines from this book and anyhow you people know Kohen and Rogers I have not mentioned V Ganeshan here because I'm not a big fan but again it's a good uh, book to at least know some basics and practice some numericals all right but you will not do any of this I will tell you I will give you the theory I will give you the material I will tell you everything in videos in lectures so you will not refer anything of this unless and until I ask you to read but if you are reading, please follow these books. All right, Sayyad Ahmed and Kohen and Rogers, I'll tell you uh, what topic. Uh, actually, the thing is in Kohen and Rogers, you only have turbojet and turbofan. Whereas in Sayyad Ahmed, you have all the engines. That's the advantage. All right, so we will discuss about this. I will come back to these topics again. Okay, so Shriya, for textbook for thermodynamics as well as for revision of the basics. So Shriya, uh, see, thermodynamics, you can refer DS Kumar, you can refer PK Nag. PK Nag is a book which everyone follows, but I suggest you, please don't worry about it. Whatever thermodynamic is needed, right? I will cover in the lecture and it is already present in your study material books. All right. So if it is needed, I'll let you know what topic to read and from which. So it is not that you have one book which will cover everything. So if you need any revision of any basic, you let me know. We will discuss this. And then depending upon the topic, I'll tell you which book to read. Is it fine, Shriya? <clears throat> oh. 
Okay, perfect. Let's move ahead. So now I'm, and guys, again, this is not a basic lecture, basic lecture in the sense I'm not forming any base or a background or something. We are actually starting our gate syllabus. If I just quickly hover towards the slide, right? In today's lecture, my plan is to solve some of the gate numericals. And you can see I have already pulled out some 2024 and there's some other numericals of pure gate syllabus only. So please believe me, this is not like we are just forming a background or this is the first lecture. So this is easy. I will try to cover it. Understand everything from first point because things I'm explaining now in next 10, 15 minutes will take care of your entire uh, next four or five lectures. All right. So the thing is how thrust is produced and what do you mean by this thrust and why engine produces thrust and why thrust is needed. So if you people agree, uh, once you have your aircraft, right, and you have your aircraft wing, you people have seen typically a engine will be mounted below the aircraft, right? Something like this, they will mount the engine. And you have on the right hand side also. The main motive of an aircraft engine is to produce thrust in the forward direction so that your aircraft can move forward. And typically we denote this thrust as F. All right, this is how thrust is shown. Typically, you in some books you will write this as T also, but any terminology, T or F, you should be comfortable that it is a force which is trying to pull your aircraft forward. All right. Now, how this engine will produce this thrust? I want you people to understand this concept. And with this itself, you will understand that most of your gate numericals will be covered. So if you take an example, let's say a turbojet engine, and you will understand turbojet engine because this is my whole lecture today. This is the entry of the engine and this is the exit. All right. And typically, let's say I have drawn a dashed lines here. I'm coming to very important topics. I know everyone has heard about it, but they don't know the basics. So I've kept those slides to make you understand these things. Now, air will enter inside this engine. All right. And people say this as ambient conditions. So atmospheric conditions, there are different catchy words, ambient conditions, atmospheric conditions, free stream conditions, sea level conditions. They will say multiple words to give you these properties. In simple words, you have an air which is entering inside the aircraft. And this air will enter with certain velocity, right? Now in books, sometimes they will represent this as CI. Sometimes it is also written as CA. And this is also the velocity of the aircraft, guys. Now, why this is velocity of the aircraft? If you people agree, if your aircraft is moving with 100, let's say, kilometer per hour, the engine which is mounted here will get an air which is inside at a velocity of 100 km per hour only. So when you move forward, when your aircraft move forward, the air enters inside the engine with the same velocity. Correct? So this CI is basically the velocity of the aircraft or they can say velocity of the air entering inside the engine. Both are one in the same thing. Now, depending upon the size of this engine, all right, size of the engine means this portion. If you see the entry, there is an area, right, of the cowling. Depending upon this size, the amount of air which enters inside the engine will be denoted as M dot A, which is mass flow rate of air. So mass flow rate of air, you will see in numericals also, they will say 100 kg of air is entering every second, kg per second, 200 kg, 1000 kg per second of air enters inside the engine. All right. And it you will see later, it totally depends upon the velocity of the aircraft and the altitude of the aircraft, whether you're flying at 10 kilometer altitude or whether you're flying at 15 kilometer altitude, we will slowly develop all these understanding. But as of now, just imagine that there is an air which is coming in with a velocity of CI with a mass flow rate of M dot A. More the mass flow rate means more air is entering. 
Now, definitely, when you have an air, that air will also have some pressure and be denoted as PA. You will come to know if you see, I have kept one slide understanding what is static and stagnation. So it will be very confusing when we move ahead. So please try to understand uh, whatever I am saying now. So this air is having some pressure. Now, even if you don't understand or you, no one can visualize pressure. So I will try to make it very simple for you when we move ahead. As of now, this air has certain properties and let's say it has some temperature, it has some density, and I will define Mach numbers also later. Now with this property of air, you enter inside the engine. Now in engine, what happens? You have kept few components. The first component you told me is a diffuser. I'm not going in detail of this. I will go later. The next component, which you say after that, you told me it's a compressor. Then you told me that we will have a combustion chamber. Then you told me we will have a turbine. And then you told me in the end, we have a nozzle. All right, don't worry about these namings. So first you say diffuser, then you say compressor, then you say combustion chamber, then you say turbine, and then you have a nozzle. You will understand why all these components are present. But after crossing each one of them in the same sequence, there are gases which are coming out. So there are gases which are coming out with the velocity of Cj. They will say this as Cj because they name it as jet velocity. Now, what is the concept here? All right. I will come back to this later. The gases which are coming out, the first thing we need to understand here is at the entry, we were having air. And at the exit, we have gases. Can anyone tell me why air is converted into gases? Any particular reason? Guys, anyone? Okay, perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So it's somewhat clear that what we have done in combustion chamber is we have added fuel. All right. And when we add fuel and air is coming inside this combustion chamber, when it is reaching here, what we are doing is we are burning this mixture. So to burn any fuel, you need oxygen. All right. And oxygen is present in air. And hence it is known as air breathing engines. But if you want to design a rocket and in rocket, if you carry fuel and when you go to space, there is no air, there is no oxygen. So you cannot burn it. So you will carry your own oxidizer. That means you kind of in very simple words, you carry your own air, you mix oxygen and fuel, and then you burn them. And when you burn them, Air and fuel, when they burn together, convert into gases. So guys, what is happening is air is entering. It is air, 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 air. As soon as you enter into combustion chamber, you burn the fuel. And after this, all are gases and the gases will come out. This is the reason, first of all, I have written gases here and I have written air here at the entry and you know what is this transition where it is happening now this is just a starting point your gate slabers will cover how this burning is happening how the mixing is happening how much energy is produced how much fuel is needed all these things are part of your gate slabers so it is just an introduction as of now now with this you come out with a velocity of cj and these are gases and these gases will come out, let's say at a pressure of PE. Now, again, 
I don't expect you to understand what is PE and how it is getting generated. All right. You will slowly understand what is this PE because your whole equation will work on pressures. No, 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 no. You will come to know Devakar. I have this point. So when you say air, right? Okay. I'll give you an example. Devakar asked me, sir, how can you differentiate between air and air is also a gas. So Devakar, when we say air, I'm talking about atmospheric air which you breathe. All right. Now, when you burn fuel inside the air, you imagine you burn coal at your home. Can you, can you uh, inhale that gases, which is being produced now? Divakar, is it possible for you to breathe the gases which are being produced because of burning coal? Can you uh, inhale that? No, right? Those are gases. So when gases comes out, right? This is a huge uh, research area. These gases should not be harmful because you are releasing these gases in atmospheres and it should not be poisonous. So there is a huge regulation before any engine comes out for operation, right? In work, any airlines purchases, it goes through a test and the gases which are coming out should not be poisonous. That also you will learn in combustion chamber. You will understand why or how we cannot uh, allow or what are poisonous gases and what are non-poisonous gases which are allowed you will learn in combustion chamber all right so now guys it's fine i understood air enters at a velocity of ci air leaves at a velocity of cj the question is why we are doing this what is the motive of doing this the motive of doing this is you want to produce a thrust in the forward direction, and this thrust is denoted as F. Now I'm writing one big equation, then I will go in detail of this equation and believe me guys, it will solve many, many questions. It will solve even your 2024 question only with this basics. Let me write this and then I'll explain you the meaning of each and every term here. This is known as a thrust equation for all gas turbine engine family. Now, this equation can be used for turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, turboshaft, ramjet, scramjet, whatever engine comes, you can use this equation. Now, what this equation tells, how this equation comes and why this operation is happening. So, first of all, your gas turbine engines produces thrust because of change in momentum. Now, I don't want to give you heavy words. I want you people to have a feel for this. When I say change in momentum, the whole motive of our engine is if air enters at a velocity of CI, the gases should leave at very high velocity so that once you leave with very high velocity, you will get a push in the forward direction, which you name as thrust. This can only happen if you have very, very high velocity, which is CJ compared to CI. Simple words, if at the entry, your velocity is let's say 100 meter per second, and at the exit, your velocity is 100 meter per second, you will not produce any thrust because there is no change in momentum. There is no reaction force coming into picture. But if at the exit, I have high velocity coming out, you can imagine huge difference and you will get a huge push in the forward direction, which is nothing but the thrust. So how thrust is produced? If anyone asks you, you should tell that because of change in momentum. You will understand what do you mean by change in momentum slowly. So whenever you are, someone asks you to design any engine, right? Guys, believe me, not only in basics, even if you work, the whole motive is to get this velocity as high as possible. If the CJ is higher, my thrust is higher, as simple as that. So you want to increase this CJ exit velocity as high as possible 
compared to this CI. All right. Now, <clears throat> if you people agree, I'll come back to this equation now. We have learned from our childhood that force is nothing but mass into acceleration. Correct. And we have also known that this acceleration is nothing but velocity divided by time. dv by dt is acceleration, right? Now, we have slightly manipulated this term. If you take this time with mass, so if you people agree this mass is in kg, and if you take time with this, this becomes kg per second, which is our mass flow rate. Correct. And if you take velocity and multiply this with velocity, which is meter per second, if you see this term, forget about this one plus F for time being, you have multiplied this with velocity. So just see this term M dot A into CJ, M dot A into CI. So rather than mass into acceleration, what you are doing is you are doing mass flow rate into velocity. That's what you are doing. And that's what you see in your equation. What is produced force force is nothing but thrust. Now in this equation itself, and this will be in Newton's correct force unit is Newton. Now this is explained. This is fine. I understood this part. But there is one more term here, which is written in terms of pressure. And we will slowly develop this. And then I will show you your gate numericals. You will really see what low standard gate questions are. So if you read your formulas properly, right, it is very easy to score in gate and you can even end up in top 10 ranks. That is no uh, big thing in gate. I will show you the uh, questions today. Now, just for the note sake, this portion which you see the first part is known as momentum thrust. This thrust is coming because of change in momentum. Change in momentum means because of change in velocity. I told you if CI and CJ are same, there will be no thrust. Correct. And this second portion which you see here is known as pressure thrust. So you have total thrust, which consists of two portions. One is known as momentum thrust and the other one is known as pressure thrust. Now we know pressure is nothing but force divided by area. I'm just giving you the formulas first. Then we will see what is why this is producing thrust. So if I want to calculate force, you can simply multiply pressure and area, right? That's what you have done here. If you see, you have pressure and you have area. So at least unit wise, I am making some sense. I have thrust whose unit is Newton and I have two portions. One is momentum thrust and the other one is pressure thrust. Now let's go in detail of each and every term here. All right. Please follow me, guys. This is important. Now, here, from here, all of your gate questions match. Let's first write what is each and everything here. So, M dot A is nothing but our mass flow rate of air. And its unit should be kg per second. How much amount of air is entering? Then CJ is our exit velocity. The velocity with which I'll say velocity of gases coming out of the engine. Then CI here is inlet velocity of air, the air which enters inside my engine. Then PA is the people say ambient pressure, atmospheric pressure. I will say static pressure and I really know that you people have heard about what is static and stagnation and total, but you don't know or you don't have a feel what is the difference between these components. You know the formulas, I agree. 
This is static pressure of air or in bracket you can write ambient conditions or atmospheric conditions. I will explain this. Then PE is the static pressure of gases at exit. And the last, not the last, AE is the exit area of nozzle. All right. So just the naming convention. If you see in the diagram, right, you can actually visualize. CI is the inlet velocity and this PA is the pressure at the entry. CJ is the exit velocity and the velo pressure at this point is PE. Now, if you see in this diagram, this area I have written as AE, exit area, exit area of the nozzle. So at least we know what all these components are and what are the, uh, I can say, notations you will be using. All standard textbooks use this. Now, the last component which is present in this equation is F. And typically, we denote this as M dot F divided by M dot A, which is known as fuel air ratio. All right. Now, I will be going in detail about all these components. Why? And this equation will literally make sense to you. You will need not to learn this because you will understand this in next five minutes thoroughly. Now, what I'll do, guys, I will explain you the meaning of this M dot F by M dot A. Just give me a few minutes. What I will do is I will substitute this F as M dot F by M dot A. And I'll go to next slide and I'll write this equation. So thrust is equals to M dot A into one plus M dot F by M dot A into CJ minus CI. If you see in this formula, CJ minus CI plus PE minus PA into exit area. All right. <clears throat> no, no, fuel air ratio will not have any units. Akash, this fuel M dot F is in kg per second. M dot A is in kg per second. So it's a dimensionless number. It is like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.02. It's just a dimensionless number. All right. You will see why this number is calculated. Now, guys, what I want you people to do is I want you to multiply this M dot A inside. Now, when you multiply this M dot A inside, I hope you people agree. This is M dot A plus M dot F into CJ minus M dot A into CI and nothing happens to this term, right? And what is this term? I should use some technical terms now. Nothing happens to pressure thrust. So I have simply written M dot F by M dot A and I have multiplied this inside. I end up with this expression. Now you will understand why I was saying change in momentum. Now, if you see M dot A plus M dot F is the mass flow rate of gases which are coming out. Guys, I need your response here. Yes or no. Do you people agree? M dot A was coming from here. M dot F is the amount of fuel which you people have added and they both combine together and they move out and the mass flow rate which is moving out is M dot A plus M dot F. So gases is nothing but M dot A plus M dot F together combination and they are coming out with a velocity of CJ. So this is momentum of air which is coming outside the engine m dot a plus m dot f into cj is the momentum of gases which is coming out from the aircraft at the entry what is the momentum guys at the entry i only have m dot a which is entering with velocity ci please understand now at the entry your velocity is ci mass flow rate is m dot a at the exit, your velocity is CJ 
and your mass flow rate is m dot a plus m dot f. So if you see, I have simply calculated the change or the difference exit momentum minus inlet momentum gives you the momentum thrust. Pressure thrust has no change in it. I will come back to this slowly. So if you people agree, how you can increase this value? If you have more CJ, that means more velocity of gases which are coming out, you have more thrust. And I told you the baseline or the basic of any engine is to produce thrust. And what is the motive? Gases should come out at very high velocity. I hope you people have seen this in a lot of movies. You have seen... Uh, all the uh, <clears throat> uh, movies, right? Avengers and all. You have seen so many fighter aircraft which are traveling at very high speeds. They make huge noise and gases are coming out at very high velocity. You can even see the, uh, I can see, you can even see the fire which is coming out of the engines, right? So more the velocity at the exit, more is the thrust. More the thrust means you can travel faster. So fighter aircraft will produce more thrust because they want to travel at a very high speed. And for that, we should have high value of CJ. So I really hope you people understood what this expression now is making sense. It looks different when you see in this form, but when you substitute F value and when you multiply inside, right, you will clearly understand it is nothing but momentum at the exit minus momentum at the entry. And the difference between these two people is known as momentum thrust. Is this clear for everyone? I need your response here, guys. Is this okay? Perfect. Good, good, good. Now, let's come back to same kind of force which is produced by pressure difference also. So you have momentum thrust but now you have pressure thrust also which is kind of self-explanatory. The pressure here is the pressure of the gases which are coming out and typically you will say this is 1 bar or 10 bar or 2 bar, that depends upon the numerical. I will come back to pressure in detail because you cannot solve any numerical if you don't know the difference between static and stagnation pressure. And if you people agree, I have seen people doing this. They see what they think is that sir, pressure is PE here. At the entry pressure is PA, PE minus PA is the difference in pressure. And I multiplied with area, pressure into area is force. It's okay, but it is bad. Ideally speaking, you should know this, that these gases, which are coming out at a pressure of PE, actually are going into atmosphere. And guys, what is pressure in atmosphere? Atmosphere is not only at the entry, at the exit also atmosphere is, you are flying in air, right? Guys, is this part clear what I am trying to explain here? So ideally speaking, the gases which are coming out, are coming out with a pressure of PE. Imagine this pressure as a person which is coming out. And that person, more the pressure means more powerful the person. All right, so there is a person which is coming out, let's say of uh, 100 kg person, which is coming out a very heavy built person with a pressure of PE. Now, if there is a light person standing here, this light person will not be able to stop. And this person will try to push this. And this push will again create a thrust in the forward direction. Now, take it in this way. If you have, okay, first of all, let's do step by step. So this PE minus PA when you do, right, 
So you people should know after this lecture that it is not PE minus PA at the entry. No. This is PE minus pressure at the atmosphere where your gases are coming out. And it is luckily same because our engine is flying in atmospheric conditions only. So it is this PE minus PA and hence only AE will come. If you learn it in this way, right? PE minus PA at the entry, then question should come, sir, why not area at the entry is coming into picture, which is AI. It will not come because we are not looking at the entry. Now we are simply looking at what is pressure here and what is the person who is standing outside trying to stop me. And the difference between multiplied by the area at the exit only will give you the pressure thrust. So you have two press two thrust now. One is momentum thrust. Another one is pressure thrust. And if you add both these two terms, what you're going to get will be the total thrust. Now, I hope you know each and everything in this expression. And you also understood what is momentum thrust, what is pressure thrust. I need a quick nod from you people. And once it is, I give you like, let's say 30 seconds, one minute to digest this, ask your doubts if you have any, anything, and then please tell me, otherwise I'll move forward. Tell me guys. Clear? Perfect. Okay. Pressure of gas and air. Okay. Priyanshi, uh, <clears throat> you will understand the meaning of pressure. What is exactly pressure in my coming slides? But as of now, you please understand one thing. Uh, just take it in this way. I'll give you an example. Maybe this will uh, slightly clear your concept. Let's say you are sitting in a room and you're breathing in air. All right that air must be at certain pressure, right? That air is having some pressure that is denoted as PA. All right. I'll give you some simple example. Now, let's say what you do is you are in a very cold uh, atmosphere. And now just for your easiness, what you have done, you have started a bonfire. So you have started burning the wood. Now, when you burn that, can I say when you burn wood, air, and wood, when they burn together, they produce gases. Can you imagine and tell me, are these gases will have same pressure or different pressure? Just a yes or no. What do you feel? What do you expect? It will be different, right? Definitely. We don't know how to calculate pressure or how to see pressure. But definitely by our intuition, we know that this gas is different than the fresh air we were having. That means it is having some different pressure, which I'm simply denoting as PE. Just keep this in mind. You will understand why this PE is different. That is my whole uh, half an hour lecture today on this PE, what this PE is and how this PE is calculated. That's actually your whole uh, jet propulsion syllabus. If you understand the formulas to calculate this PE, right? Believe me, you can solve any numerical in your gate exam. The whole lectures which i'll be taking for jet propulsion the whole lecture we will focus on how to calculate this pressure how to calculate this velocity and then once we know all the formulas we can solve any numeric all right so guys you people know how a thrust equation looks like you people know what is each and every component in this equation now i'll slightly modify this equation i'll remove this because anyhow you people understood this part so this is 
our equation one. And when I say an equation and I block an equation, you, that means that is required for our gates labels. So, and this equation I'll say is like hundred percent, you will get a numerical in your gate exam on this equation. Now, what are different forms of this? Most of the times, most of the times, they will say in your gate exam that you have optimum expansion. I will explain the meaning of optimum expansion, guys. Just tell me equation wise first. When I use the word optimum expansion, the meaning is that PE is equals to PA. Now, why this is used as the word optimum? Just imagine in this way, is it not the best scenario when you want to come out, you have same kind of people with you. So let's say you take admission in some course somewhere. You need to go to some other city or you need to go to some other country itself. Is it not the optimum condition for you when you go there, you already have your friends there. So the best case for an aircraft is when the gases are coming out with a pressure of PE, it is exactly same as pressure PA. And this is known as optimum expansion. This is the best thing, guys. This is best engine you can design. But you know, in reality, you cannot design best engines, right? You will see sometime this PE will be more than PA in reality. And sometimes this PE will be less than PA. And these are referred to as over expansion and under expansion. I'm not going to confuse you now with these words. As of now, you should understand what is optimum expansion. So I've given you an example. Optimum means you simply see the same person outside. So you are with coming with same pressure. So no one will stop you. It's like your own community is sitting there and you can happily go and merge with those people. So optimum expansion means PE equals to PA. Now, if it is provided in your gate exam, you can see in this equation, when I say PE equals to PA, the second term goes to zero. Correct. And the only thrust equation I will be solving in my gate exam will be M dot A into one plus F into CJ minus CI, meaning pressure thrust is zero. Under and over expansion is altogether a different theory. You will be studying gas dynamics in detail, Priyanshi. In jet, uh, turbojet engines, for over expansion and under expansion, we will talk about choking of nozzle. So we will come back to it. As of now, I'm coming. If it is not, this is the equation you should use. If it is over expansion, then you should use. If it is optimum expansion, then you should use this equation, which is PE equals to PA. I told you, right? When PE is more than PA, this is known as under expansion. When PE is less than PA, yeah, this is known as over expansion. And why it is known as over expansion, under expansion? I will explain you that slowly. All right. <clears throat> okay. There are few questions. If P pressure thrust will be zero, so thrust will be automatically less. Okay. Brilliant doubt. Same doubt asked by Girish. Thrust is greater when PE is greater than PA. Then why we use PE equals to PA? Okay. I'll, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'll slowly develop this. Shri and Girish, I will explain your question now. So guys, when you have optimum expansion, PE equals to PA automatically my pressure thrust goes to zero and the only thrust I have is momentum thrust, which is calculated using this formula. As of now, just take this. I will explain this part. That is what my next heading is. You will understand why this is known as the best case. So the people are having this doubt. Sir, when PE is equals to PA, pressure thrust goes to zero. That means my total thrust is less than why we are saying it is the best engine. 
if PE is greater than PA, then we have the best engine, right? But it is not the case. I will explain that. I am coming to those points. So one equation is this. Second equation, which will come in your exams are this, which directly say pressure thrust is zero. And third equation, they will say, directly they will use this word, neglect fuel air ratio. Now, typically, why they neglect fuel air ratio, guys? This fuel air ratio is amount of fuel divided by amount of air. Now, amount of air entering is very high. 100 kg per second, 200 kg per second, 500 kg per second, depending upon the size of the engine, depending upon the speed you are moving. And fuel burnt is very small number. Like, let's say 1 kg, 2 kg, maybe 3 kg. So if you take this ratio, right, 3 kg of fuel burnt divided by 500 kg of air or 1000 kg per second of air, this value is, if you see, is a very small number, right? So they say typically, just for easy calculations in our gate syllabus, they say, please neglect fuel air ratio. So it's something like 1 plus F. If F is 0 0.003, why to consider 0 0.003? 1 and 1.003 are nearly same, right? So neglect it. They will say this in your exam. No confusions. So if you neglect this, your equation will reduce to this equation, which is our third equation for solving our gate numericals. So I have given you three equations for calculating thrust of any engine, first equation is with no assumptions. You can apply this equation to any engine, any condition, over expansion, under expansion, with fuel, anytime. Second equation is for optimum expansion. And third equation is when you neglect fuel air ratios. This is how thrust is calculated. This is what your thrust equation looks like. And this is how thrust is produced. That's what my main heading was, how thrust is produced. Now there are two, three open points. One is you people don't imagine or don't understand what is this PE and what is this PA. You don't have a feel. I am 100% sure. Second, sir, what we are doing inside this engine so that this velocity CI is increased to CJ what is the physics behind it? You just told me that at the entry it is CI, at the exit it is CJ, and CJ should be higher. All right, that's what our motive is. But you should achieve that, right, by doing something. Second question is this, sir, how we are achieving this? First question is how the pressure are controlling what is pressure? And third is, sir, why optimum expansion is a good thing when it is reducing my thrust. So before answering these three questions, I want to show you, this is just to make you feel good and you should know what is the standard of your gate exam. I want you people to tell me a few things. I'll show you one question. This is the question asked in 2024 guys. So latest, just our February exam. This is question number 34. So this question is asked in your exam for two marks. All right, let's read this slowly and see up till now, whether you have understood the concept or not, I'm just showing you that what is the standard of your gate exam. An aircraft with a turbojet engine is flying with a velocity of 250 meter per second speed. Now with this, can you, can anyone tell me what is this 200, 250 meter per second guys? Always you should understand your data properly. So can I say this is the velocity with which my aircraft is flying. Come on, they wide is CJ? Yes, topic. Yes, Karan. So this is the velocity with which my aircraft is moving forward. Or this is the velocity with which air is entering inside. This turbojet engine is flying at an altitude. At an altitude means it is flying somewhere, right? Maybe 5 kilometer, maybe 10 kilometer altitude. Where the density is this much. So density of air is given as 1 kg per meter cube 
and inlet area of the engine is one meter square. Now, can anyone tell me what is this guys? What is this given inlet area of the engine? No, 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 Akash. Why it is a e inlet? They are using the word inlet, right? So area at the entry is one meter square. All right. Now, next, the average velocity of the exhaust gases at the exit of the nozzle with respect to aircraft is 550 meter per second. So velocity at the exit of the aircraft is 550 meter per second. Can anyone tell me what is this 550? This is CJ, right? Perfect. So CJ is the velocity at the exit, which is 550 meter per second. All right. Assume now, please tell me what is the meaning of this statement? I want you people to understand this. Assume the engine exit pressure is equals to ambient pressure. What do you mean by this statement guys? Engine exit pressure, engine exit pressure is equals to ambient pressure, meaning this is optimum condition. And the fuel air ratio is negligible. So you should neglect F. The uninstalled thrust produced by the engine at these condition is fill in the blank in Newton, round it off to nearest integer. So we simply need to calculate the thrust for this aircraft. And now can anyone tell me with this optimum condition and with this neglected, what will be the thrust formula guys? Thrust will be equals to M dot A into CJ minus CI. You can refer your equation. This is the last equation what we have, right? You have CJ, you have CI, but you don't have mass flow rate. But we know what is mass flow rate, right? Mass flow rate is rho A V. Now, please listen to this carefully. If you're calculating mass flow rate at the entry, you should use density here, velocity here, and area here. All right. So I'll simply substitute the numbers here, rho AV. So this is density of air, inlet area, and velocity. Rho AV, everyone knows this formula. You substitute in this, please tell me this value. Density is 1, area is 1, and CI is 250. So amount of air entering is 250 kg per second you know m dot m dot a and now 250 multiplied by cj which is 550 minus 250 solve this i hope you people get this tell me is this making sense is this clear guys is this fine So this is what your gate syllabus is. This is what your gate standard is. And this is not, this is the latest year 2024, which is asked for two marks. I really hope you people understood what I'm trying to convey that how easy your gate numericals are. What we are trying to do is, is it exactly in the same fashion. When they increase the standard, I will give you all possible questions. I will give you all the possible assignments to solve. I will give you all possible tests to solve and you will be really good in this in the end. We will solve each and every gate numerical starting from 2007 till 2024 of all the topics. Is this numerical clear? Can I move ahead? Can I assume this is fine for all of you? Perfect. Let me show you if I can solve any of the numerical. So let's see if you people can relate this. This is asked in 2011. Question number 29. So this is also asked for two marks. Let's just quickly see whether you people understood the concept or not. A turbojet powered aircraft is flying at a Mach number of 0 0.8 at an altitude of 10 kilometers. So there is a turbojet engine. 
you are flying this engine at an altitude of 10 kilometers uh, at the altitude of 10 kilometers and Mach number is 0 0.8. If you don't know what is Mach number, it's perfectly fine. I'll, I'll explain you. The inlet and exit areas of the engine are 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 meters respectively. So can you tell me what is this guys? Inlet area is 0 0.7 meter square and exit area is 0 0.4 meter square, right? The exhaust gases have velocity of 500 meter per second and pressure of 60 kPa. Now I want you people to tell me what are these? What is this 500 meter per second? I think this is yes, clear. Exhaust gases means CJ and a pressure of 60 kPa. What do you understand by this word? What is this pressure guys? PE, perfect. This is 60 kPa, all right? Now the next, the free stream pressure, density and speed of sound are this, this and this respectively. So let's understand each and every term here. So free stream, Pressure is this much. So I hope you understand the meaning of free stream. Free stream pressure is this much means PA is 26.5 kPa. Free stream density is this much, meaning rho A is 0 0.413 kg per meter cube. This is also fine. And if you know it's fine, if not, understand this. Speed of sound is 299. So speed of sound basically is represented as A and this is given as 299.5 meter per second. I'll come back to this, but let's see whether we understood the concept. We need to calculate thrust of the engine. Now I have two questions for you people. First tell me, do we have pressure thrust in this numerical? Yes or no? We have pressure thrust. Perfect. Se everyone understood this. Second question to you people. Do we know what is fuel air ratio or is there any information given about fuel air ratio? No information given, right? So this is important guys. Whenever in the numerical they have not given you any information related to fuel, you have to neglect it. They have not used the word neglected, but they have not given any information. So I am not going to consider fuel air ratio. So what is the thrust equation now? If you people agree, your first term will be m dot a into cj minus ci and your second term will be pe minus pa into exit area. I hope you understand how to utilize this equation. So the only thing I have made zero here is fuel air ratio because nothing was provided to us. Now, let's see, whenever you start any gate numerical, right, always make sure that you write your data and you see what you want to calculate and start with that formula. Now you see what is present. I know CJ. I know CI. I know CI, right? No, I don't know CI. I know Mac number. All right, let me write it here. Mac number is 0 0.8. Okay. Now I know PE. I know PA, I know exit area. So the only problem I have, I don't have mass flow rate and I don't have velocity. Now guys, if you don't know this, it's perfectly fine, but I'm telling you now, Mach number, basic definition is, Mach number at the entry is velocity at the entry divided by speed of sound, which is A. I'll say at the entry only, ambient conditions. We will later see that this is gamma RT under root and all. I don't want to go into uh, all the formulas in one shot. Let's build our concepts slowly. So if you know Mach number, which is 0 0.8, I want to calculate CI. And if I use this velocity speed of sound, I can calculate CI from this. Please substitute this value and help me. Ame is telling me that this answer is 239.6. Why temperature is 239? CI is 239, right? Uh, Rahul? 
239.6 yes girish am everyone is getting this so now i know ci also i know cj i know pe i know pa and i know ae all right so the priyanshi you see your turbojet engine is flying with a mac number of 0.8 they have given me that my aircraft is flying at a mac number of 0.8 this is the reason i used 0.8 all right now guys i hope this is a repetition now you know how to calculate mass flow rate mass flow rate is rho a v you know density is 0.413 you know area at the entry is 0.7 you know velocity is 239.6 substitute in this and tell me what is the mass flow rate of air i'll come back to this okay yeah so 69.26 69.26 okay tawfiq uh, rohit ame shriya divya everyone is getting this so this is 69.26 kg per second now guys we have everything let's go into our formula and calculate now i'll tell you what mistake you people will do mass flow rate is 69.26 CJ is 500, CI is 239.6 plus. Now, guys, everything should be in SI units. Now, they have given me pressure in kilopascals. You cannot use kilopascals because kilopascal is not an SI unit. Pascals is an SI unit. So, I will convert this PE, which is 60, into 10 to the power 3 into pascals. If you don't do that, you will get zero in your gate exams. Just make sure not only in propulsion, throughout your academics, throughout your whole life, when you solve any equation, it should be consistent in units. SI units should be followed. Minus 26.5 into 10 to the power 3 and multiplied by area is 0 0.7. You solve this equation, whatever you are going to get will be in Newtons. I told you SI units, right? And please tell me what is this number? But because it's a fill in the blank question asked in your exam, you need to enter this value using your keyboard. You cannot substitute exit area is 0.4. Sorry, my bad. Exit area is 0.4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Exit area is 0.4. Now you substitute everything in this and now you will calculate thrust. They want in kilonewton, so you need to divide it with 10 to the power 3. So I think, Dave, you're telling me this answers 31, 3. 1437.4. This is in Newtons. So if you want to substitute this in kilonewtons, I hope you people agree. You will write this as 31.4 kilonewton. This becomes your final answer, which you will put in your gate exam. So what all things we take care? We take care how much thrust is being produced. So if you are getting 31437, 31435, all of us will give same marks because once you convert this into kilonewtons, you will get answer as 31.4. I am open for doubts now. Please tell me if you have any. And if it is clear, guys, please respond. Guys, is it okay? Good, good. Okay, so there was one doubt asked by, I think someone asked, just a minute. Yeah, yeah, Siddha asked me, sir, does speed of sound changes depending upon altitude? All right, so uh, just to answer your question, Siddha, so this is, this should be clear for everyone. No, no, uh, they, they will ask uh, one or two decimal. This was old, right? 2011. Now they ask. Now, please listen to this. So he asked me, sir, do we have uh, speed of sound different at different altitudes? So let's understand this concept. 
so that we are clear also. You are at sea level. All right. You know sea level. You are standing uh, at ground. And your aircraft is flying here. Your aircraft velocity is 100 meter per second. All right. Your sea level temperature is typically 288 Kelvin. And even if you don't know this, it's fine. I am just giving you an example. Now, if you want to calculate Mach number at sea level now, your velocity at sea level divided by speed of sound at sea level and speed of sound is calculated as gamma r t under root. I want you people to do calculations with me. So your velocity is 100. I will give you these values of gamma r. Don't worry, I have uh, a slide for this. So gamma is 1.4, r is 287. Just use these values for time being and temperature is 288, taken under root. And please tell me guys, what is the Mach number here? Just substitute these values. Don't worry what is 1.4, what is 287. I'm just giving you an example. So can you please tell me what is the Mach number here? Zero point two nine. Okay. Now you fly here. Let's say you have a takeoff, then you climb and you reached eleven kilometer altitude. <clears throat> Let's say you are still flying at hundred meter per second. But now your temperature, you people agree, right? At eleven kilometer altitude, if you go you will be in a colder space, right? This temperature is typically 216.5. Don't worry about these numbers. You will calculate this. Now, using same formula, can you please calculate this Mach number? Velocity is still same. Divided by gamma is 1.4. R is 287. And temperature is 216.5. Taken under root. Tell me this Mach number. Zero point three three. Now, Siddha, I hope I have answered your question. So, speed of sound is basically given as gamma RT under root. First thing. So, if you go to different altitudes, your temperature will change, right? So, your speed of sound will be different at sea level, and it will be different at this altitude. Is this first point clear? This was your doubt, right? Am I clear in this? All right. Second, the most important thing you observe that even though my aircraft was flying at 100 here and 100 here, see aircraft is flying at same speed, right? But if you see your Mach numbers are different. So for an aircraft person, velocity is never a good indication. Why? Even if you fly at sea level or if you fly at higher altitude, the velocity of the aircraft is same. It is not taking into account where you are flying. See, for an automobile, when you drive a car, you will always remain at sea level. You will never go in air, right? So for velocity of the car makes sense because you're always at sea level. So your velocity is 100, you're speeding up 200, 250, or you are standing in traffic 20, 30. Velocity alone is good. But when you have an aircraft, right, this aircraft can fly at 5 kilometer altitude. And I hope you people agree it Mach number will be different here. Let's say 0 0.31. It Mach number is different at sea level. It's Mach number is different at this. So velocity is not the thing which tells me the complete information. It doesn't tell us where we are flying, what we are doing, how we are doing. This is the reason for an aircraft person, the most important parameter rather than velocity is a Mach number. And this Mach number depends upon speed of sound and speed of sound depends upon temperature and temperature depends upon the height. The more height you go, at least in troposphere, your temperature will keep on decreasing. I hope this is clear for everyone. I hope Priyansha, Priyanshi, it is also clear for you, right? So how I have converted Mach number into velocity and then we have calculated. So that this is clear, right?
perfect let's show you another question 2015 question number 39 so this is asked again for two marks let's read this and see whether we can apply the concept or not air enters an aircraft engine with a velocity of 180 meter per second with a flow rate of 94 kg per second so velocity of air with which we are entering is 180 meter per second and the mass flow rate with which we are entering is 94 kg per second all right the engine combustor you know what is combustor right combustor is nothing but our combustion chamber the combustor requires 9.2 kg per second of air to burn 1 kg second of fuel can anyone tell me what data they are trying to give us here the engine combustor requires fuel air ratio so they are saying amount of fuel you know what is fuel air ratio right f and they are saying i need 1 kg per second of fuel to burn 9.2 kg per second of air don't use it at 9.2 use it as 1 divided by 9.2 the velocity of gas exiting from the engine is 640 so cj is 640 meter per second the momentum thrust developed by the engine is now can anyone tell me do we need to calculate pressure thrust guys yes or no no right why there is no information given they are not interested and second they are asking us just to calculate what is the momentum thrust so please don't worry about the expansions now your thrust equation will be simply m dot a into 1 plus f into cj minus ci and we just need to solve this with numbers mass flow rate is 94 fuel air ratio is 1 divided by 9.2 cj is 640 ci is 180 solve this i hope again you understand what is the standard so they give you everything what we need to do is we just need to substitute some numbers understand the data properly and then solve the numeric tell me guys i'll wait for you just one second okay did they already gave me an answer i expect other people also Four seven nine four zero. Is it? Topic is telling me uh, four option option D, right? Sandeep, Dev, all people are getting seven seven nine seven seven nine. Topic, you need to check. You are telling me option uh, nine four zero. You are telling me option C. Option everyone is getting option D. Akash option D, please check your calculations. Yeah, everyone is, Yograj is also getting this. Other people, Sandeep also get the same value. Priyanka, Akash, Ame, everyone. Akash and uh, uh, Taufik, you need to check your calculations, guys. You are not, you are not, uh, we are not getting option C. Option is D. I hope it's clear. I'll move ahead. I'll show you one more numerical. I'll come back to this. I'll come back to this. Okay. So all these isobaric, isoporic, my intention was to go slowly and develop these relations. So now, once this is done, okay, I don't want to enter into this uh, for now because this will take around half an hour for me to explain this. And once you understand this static and dynamic, right, what we will do is we will enter into detailed turbojet engine 
because guys i need to explain you now you understood how the thrust works but now i need to explain you why you are getting this high cj and why you have installed all these components here so what we're going to do is we will going to design a turbojet engine then we will understand what diffuser will do what compressor do what combustion chamber do what turbine do what nozzle do and because of all these five people together you will get this high value of cj and once you know cj everyone knows how to calculate thrust so we will slowly develop this i will wrap up today's session i'll meet you tomorrow guys i'll share you the details 